All right, Alien Institute crew. Many of us have probably heard that SpaceX is continuing to make giant strides in the overall objective to become a space-faring civilization. In a step toward the intermediate goal to get humans to Mars and ultimately settling the red planet, Elon Musk and NASA are slated to bring human spaceflight back to the American soil after NASA's lengthy nine-year absence from the launch game. Fasten your seatbelts, for SpaceX will be launching two astronauts via the Dragon and Falcon 9 launch vehicle to the International Space Station on the 27th of May at 1332 Pacific Time. We will discuss more about this in four, three, two, one. After four decades of ineffectiveness in the space game and almost a decade of mild disgrace due to transportation choices of the Russian Soyuz to get Astros to the International Space Station, NASA on the 27th of May could be veering down a more productive path as they team up with SpaceX's ingenious Dynamo and megastar Elon Musk. We are not overly optimistic and we are not saying NASA is going to finally become mission oriented like they were in the aggressive Apollo era, but this partnership with a highly motivated visionary like Musk could rejuvenate the once mighty NASA. Regardless, NASA with Musk's Falcon 9 will be blasting off from Florida. If successful, this could be a first step in captivating minds of a momentous space culture in this new decade. The mission will see NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley as the first to fly on board Musk's Dragon, a reusable cargo spacecraft as part of the Demo 2 mission to and from the International Space Station. This will be the first manned orbital space mission from the United States since NASA retired manned spaceflight programs launched from American soil in 2011. At this point, I must make a not so brief interjection about another extraordinary company somewhat similar to SpaceX. The company was called Scaled Composites. And before they were bought from Northrop, it was making great progress in the Mojave Desert. On 21 June 2004, I was there in the California desert to witness Michael Melville pilot Spaceship One into suborbital space as the first privately owned spaceflight. And on 4 October, more bragging rights were earned by a mission that collected the Anzari X Prize. Additionally, Scaled Composites showed the resolve that a company needs in the space game by pursuing forward after Spaceship Two crashed in the Mojave Desert, sadly killing pilot Mike, Michael Alsbury and injuring pilot Peter Siebold. Although only suborbital, the new Spaceship Two climbed into space in 2016 with the hopes of Spaceship Three becoming orbital. Unfortunately, the incredible company that the brilliant engineer Bert Rutan built with great vision was bought by Northrop and the limitless ideas of scaled composites were stifled. I don't think that we will ever have a funeral, figuratively speaking, for SpaceX as a company as we did for Scale Composites because Elon Musk's vision of humans existing throughout the solar system is one of such a grand scale. The vision is so grand that humans 5,000 years from now will be communicating to each other about this one moment in time when humans finally left the fictional safety of their cradle called Earth. These future humans will not know of history that we know today because it will be of no importance, but they will communicate to one another their marvel 
and admiration of Elon Musk, the trailblazer and futurist, and Robert Zubrin, father of the Mars Society, and his pragmatic plans to populate Mars. That being said, we must all be on guard. Although we have great leaders in the magnetic personalities of Musk and Zubrin, and a great banner to rally around, we must always remember and remember bitterly that we were promised Mars in 1981. A NASA plan in 1969 was slated to land man on Mars in 1981 and to have a permanent Mars base by 1988 using the Saturn V rockets of the day. We have waited far too long already. Fortunately for us, Every waking and sleeping hour of Musk's mind is consumed by the idea to propel humans into a higher level of being. This obsession is what implies that he is centuries ahead of his time. Musk, with his great leadership, has brought extraordinary engineers to his company, not for the money, because they could earn more money elsewhere, but to be part of a grand idea the idea of settling Mars. His goal to land humans on Mars in 2024 is behind schedule, but his relentless determination will ultimately turn fantasy into reality. Of course, in due time, some remarkable futurist will take the baton from Musk and bravely expand the radiant plans for humanity. Let's face it, what could be more electrifying than terraforming Mars building a society there, and then moving on to making the moons of Saturn and Jupiter home. Okay, back to our 27th of May launch. As we all know, the long lists of the SpaceX successes just keeps getting longer. It seems like yesterday, the Falcon 9 first stage miraculously landed on a barge at sea. On the 27th, Notwithstanding risk, a huge step in the mission to Mars could be accomplished by delivering two astronauts to the space station. The launch of the crew will fittingly take place from the historic Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We say historic because Pad 39A was where Apollo 11, carrying the first men to land on the moon, lifted off on the 16th of July, 1969. Additionally, it is congruent to resume manned launches at the spot where the program was discontinued. The last domestic manned launch for NASA was Atlantis, which took place on the 8th of July, 2011, from launch pad 39A. Again, I'm not making any guarantees but at this point in time, it does feel like the tide is finally turning back to a period when humans thought they could do anything. It seems our innate tendencies for exploration are extending out from a gloomy cloud resembling that of the Dark Ages. People in certain circles are starting to once again ask, what if? Groups of people, and the groups are getting larger, are thinking big and investing their brain power into areas of scientific endeavor, rather than consuming themselves with trivial gossip and pop culture. At one time, we did believe we could do anything. Recall, in 1969, NASA had plans to have a permanent lunar base by 1978, and we already mentioned their realistic and bold plans for Mars. If we had followed through with the plan, there would have been, within the first 10 years, a small population of native Martians being cared for by their parents in Martian habitats. In due course, and assuredly, over another couple decades, a high school kid on Mars would have been giving the first 
valedictorian speech, probably at Zubrin High School. This speech praising the great engineering feats of the past. This first speech on Mars would have exemplified human progress. Of course, not many years after that, probably present day, not too far from the original landing site, a new school would have sprung up. This school would have accommodated the crosstown rivals at Musk High School. The 2020 valedictorian speech there would have included, among other things, new inventions, theories in science, and upcoming missions to build a permanent base on one of the moons of Saturn or Jupiter. This sight to behold would have been just the beginning. Nevertheless, with minds like Dr. Zubrin, Elon Musk, and the Federation that follows, we will, one day, as triumphant humans, witness a valedictorian speech on Mars. Surely, the speech will mention the curious nature of human beings and the intrinsic desire of humans to boldly explore. And it will more than likely pay tribute to the great scientists and mathematicians of the past, as well as the renowned explorers who were constantly pushing to new frontiers. And in wrapping the speech up, the valedictorian will honor math, the queen of the chessboard, by saying, today, we, as Martians, stand in full agreement to use math aggressively and continue to explore, expand, and understand. Because right now, math is the best thing we have to make sense of our mysterious universe. And here, on Mars, the fourth planet from the sun, it is our passion and our venture to make sense of that very same universe in which we live. Hey team members, understanding great minds will add to our goal to become visionaries. Don't forget to comment, share, and strike the like. But most importantly, strike that subscribe button to become part of our elite team.